Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to update this Skoda infotainment system, what to do, where to find the firmware for free and how to um, perform the uh, new software installation over here. So first of all, first thing that we want to check is go to whatever menu that we want, for example, screen, and we want to check if the upper right corner, if the touch over here is working correctly. This is essential because during the update procedure, you will have to press it over here once it's almost done. And if your touch display is not working properly over here, you will have a really hard time finishing the installation. Okay, so second thing that we want to do is press and hold the menu button when the unit, of course, is turned on. And we want to go to software update versions. And over here, we have the software train. MST2, this means that this is MIB2 standard unit for Europe, for Skoda. Uh, ZR means that the display and the mine unit are separate things. You need to remember that this is just a display and this is the mine unit. This is in your glove box. And this is the firmware number version. So over here we have P like production, 0475 T like Technisat. All those things are important when uh, you are when you will be looking for the new firmware. And right now, let's go over here to meephelper.com, and you want to type in this firmware train over here in the search field. Press go, and it will check if there's some newer um, firmware for you. It will de decode it just as I did just a few seconds before. And over here we, ca we have the information that there is a newer firmware P0480T available for you. And you want to go to a website called MIPSolution.1 Login with um, credential guest and guest. And over here you are going to MQB Solution and we are looking for MST2 Technisat. Okay, let's expand this. And we want to find firmware. So let's click over here. And we have Skoda ZR, Europe. And once we are here, we have firmwares available. And the latest one is over here. So let's right click and download it. And once it's downloaded, you want to prepare an empty SD card. I have one over here. Don't use USB drives. It will not work, you need an SD card. And once uh, this file is downloaded, you want to extract this and take all, the, all those files that you can see over here and copy them onto the, onto the SD card not in a folder, but directly on the SD card. I will show you uh, this, like how it should look. Uh, so I have my hard drive and I have the SD card. And once I enter the SD card, all those files should be here um, visible directly, including the meta info to text file. Okay, so now that we have the uh, file ready we can remove the sd card from here okay and remove sd card from your unit if you have navigation maps or music or something like that leave it empty you can also remove the uh, cd if you have a CD, cd drive in your unit mm, let's quit this let's take the sd card place it in the unit Software update is available. And now once again, let's press and hold the menu button for about three seconds. Go to software update and now go to update. Select SD card as the source. Wait a couple seconds. Yes, we want to install the 0480 version. Once again, wait a couple seconds. It will check what's on the SD card and what's already installed in the unit. So it will not do a full restore of the system or full, full
full flash of the internal memory. It will just uh, look for the differences between the current uh, firmware and the new firmware and will install only those um, differences. So we can see that the Bluetooth will not be updated, but uh, for example, mine plus a package will be updated. There's a yes. We can scroll down through this list uh, or even and go inside some of them to check what's going to be installed over here. This is not that important. All you need to do is press the start button over here like this. Confirm. Make sure that uh, your battery is charged or you have your engine on and don't play with anything in the vehicle while the procedure is going. You don't want to interrupt this. The unit will reboot a couple times, I believe, I believe three times or maybe even four. This is completely normal. The screen will go off. And since I'm working over here on the bench, not in the vehicle, and I don't have uh, ignition signal, I will have to turn it on um, at, at, at some point. But if you, are, if you are doing this in your vehicle with the engine on or the ignition on, you will not have to do such thing. Just observe the procedure and, um, and wait about 5, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes, depending on how many things needs, need to be updated in your unit. And now, while the procedure is going, you can see how many things were installed. We have 12 OK, um, not available, not OK, and remaining. So this is a simple procedure. You don't have to do anything over here. Just uh, wait and observe the uh, display. You can see that some packages are very small and they are uh, installed pretty quickly, while um, other ones are uh, much larger and require a little bit more time. Also, you will see that the unit will reboot into a different uh, different mode, or maybe it will look like this, not sure right now, but it will um, update uh, the um, recovery partitions uh, at uh, some point, I believe at the end of the installation. So first of all, it will update those 60 something packages over here then it will reboot into um, um, recovery flashing, it will flash the uh, recovery partition, and then it will reboot into, I hope, normal operation mode where we can confirm that the installation was performed, performed correctly, we can press the upper right um, uh, part of the display, and one final reboot and the unit should be up and running. So let's give it some time and we will check on it in a few seconds. We are almost done. And unit is rebooting right now. We have Skoda logo. And I believe we are going to still boot into the software update uh, uh, mode for the emergency partition updates to be performed. So be patient over here, don't press anything, don't switch off your vehicle, just wait. Remaining two things, as I said, emergency partitions, this will take a couple seconds. And after that, we will reboot one more time, just uh, for the um, installation summary. And after that, we will reboot one final time and the unit will be in normal operation mode, hopefully with the uh, updated firmware, with bug fixes. And uh, I don't think there are any mm, uh, new features that we, uh, that we would find over here. But if you had some performance issues with the unit, maybe it uh, hanged for a bit, or maybe you've experienced something else like um, sound issues or Bluetooth connectivity issues, hopefully those uh, will be gone after this update is installed. So the unit is rebooting right now. And this is the update summary that I uh, told you about a couple seconds ago. And right now we need to press over here and press over here 
and wait for the system to be restarted. And after um, a couple seconds, we will have a normal operation mode and hopefully the unit will work as expected. And the cancel button over here, um, I had to press it because we are not using diagnostic interface right now. Unit will have a fault stored, but it's fairly simple to clear it with um, something like OBD11 or VCDS. And right now I'm going to turn on the unit because I don't have ignition on signal. And we can see that the unit is already on. Let's check if it works. It's still loading, so we still have a um, little bit of lags over here. But give it a couple more seconds. We can remove the update card right now. Mm, maybe let's go to media or menu. Let's press and hold the menu button. Let's check if it's running the latest version. Yes, it is. You can also go to versions and we should see the update history. Yeah, we started with this one and we've installed this one and this is the current one. Yeah, so we can see that everything was installed as it should be. Okay, so that's it for from me for today. Um, I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful and see you soon.